Hey everyone, it's Ed with Slow Car Fix, and I'm working on my 57 truck trying to make it a little bit more comfortable for road trips. It's got an LS swap, it's a four link, coilovers, all that good stuff. It's quite comfortable to drive, got cruise control. Always been struggling with seats. Had a Cadillac bench seat when I first got it. I put in these Acura seats. Now I need a space for the dog. These are the Acura seats that I took out. They're a uh, good seat, relatively comfortable. They're very adjustable, but they're kind of firm. And uh, I wanted some old man comfy stuff. So uh, my buddy put me onto these Mercury Grand Marquis seats. They're the same as like a Lincoln Town Car, or Lincoln Continental. They're a split bench, so I can, this is the passenger side one, I can flip up that. And the uh, dog can sit in the middle. They are power, so they come with some challenges. Uh, I don't have the door switches right now, but my friend grabbed the uh, door panels out of the car, so I will have them later. But uh, it's got power lumbar adjustment and power motors and dog fur already uh, to make this go back and forth. Um, where is it right now on the track? It's kind of in the middle, so I'm probably gonna have to put power in this. Uh, also, you'll see that the front two feet are the same height, uh, but this one in the back uh, is sits in a different spot because it went on a trans tunnel. Uh, the spot that I have for them to sit is flat. I spent a bunch of time cleaning them up yesterday and today I'm going to try and get them installed. One of the things I found is that, don't mind the dog here, with my drive-by wire pedal, which I greatly prefer over cable, um, I've modified that a bit, but with the seat being as low as what it was, uh, it's like four inches lower than what the stock factory bench seat would have been. So your leg angle is a little off for the, the pedal. Um, so before I modify that pedal anymore, I want to get the seat at a more usable height. The fronts will actually almost bolt in if I slot the holes a little bit because they're 16 inch center to center. But the back holes that I have, they're just nut certs in the floor. Uh, they're 13 inch center to center, so they're not really going to work. I'm going to have to make some adapter brackets, and when I make those adapter brackets, I'm going to bring it up two inches, I think. So I've got a couple of things to do. I have to figure out how I'm going to mount them in the truck. I probably have to power them up somehow to be able to move these motors um, to be able to just bolt them in. Uh, and then later on, I will get the door switches uh, from a friend of mine and figure out where I'm going to mount them. But I think it's going to be a nice addition to the truck. They're gray. Uh, the inside of the truck is mostly gray, lighter or darker gray, but I do have this light gray pinstripe, so I think it's going to match, and they were like 125 bucks, so can't go wrong. And I got all the belts, so I'm going to take the belts that I've got in there out and install the gray belts to match. Uh, should be good, uh, but they look good. They look good now anyways. They were crappy when I got them. So I'm gonna start cutting and welding and all kinds of stuff and see what I can come up with. Okay, I'm not sure if this just got really easy or really hard. Um, as always, I'm an idiot, it's safe to say. The uh, one thing, and yes, I'm upside down, uh, I don't need to make any brackets even though I've already made them. I need to make one bracket because this foot is one inch higher than this foot. So I need to make a bracket for that and I need to be able to change the spacing from here to here to uh, make that all line up with what's in the truck. The reason I don't need the spacers to adjust the height is because 
this motorized gizmo, uh, which I don't have the switches for yet, does a lot of things. It moves it up and down and all this stuff. So uh, I haven't got the motor to work to go forward and backwards yet, but I've got it to do some funny things. Um, if I go like so, the back lifts up. And if I reverse that, the back goes down. Same with uh, the front. That's all the way. And if I reverse it, the whole track moves. One thing I haven't got is front and backwards is stuck. So I've been soaking that. And I think that'll come. I haven't tried the other one yet. I think that'll come. Just gotta rock it back and forth a bunch and let the oil soak in. Eventually, that'll go. So I don't know that I can really install these today. I'm gonna give it a shot though. Uh, the so the only bracket I need to make is uh, I need to make a bracket so this sits level with this. So I need to make it, uh, uh, I need to redrill a hole in this, one side or the other, because one side the distance is actually correct and the other side it's, it's short. So I need to play around with the back feet a little bit, but I made a whole bunch of brackets to be able to shim this whole thing up two inches and I don't need to because it, the seat goes up itself uh, more than two inches just with the adjustments that it has. So uh, that's handy. I did sit it in the truck. Uh, it's hard to sit in there right now because the track is all the way with the seat all the way back and the back runs into the cab. So it's not really gonna help me. Um, so I'm not really sure where I go from here, but either I'll do something or I won't. Okay, I think this is day three that I've been working on these seats. Uh, the first day was uh, trying to get the tracks freed and cleaning them. And second day I pulled the seats out of the truck and, the th and still trying to get the track freed. Uh, trying different options for mounting them. Turned into a job here. Uh, let me show you where I'm at and uh, whatever progress is, this is the opposite, but uh, I'm gonna keep at it and uh, it'll get done sooner or later, but it's certainly not a simple job. Things don't always go as planned. You'd think uh, a quick uh, swap of the seats would be easy. Uh, next thing you know, you're into it for a few days. Okay, so these are the, these are the old seats that I took out. That one we'll talk about in a minute. This one is a disaster uh, as well. Um, I've got it. I set it in there, I, I put in some nut certs in the floor and I set it in there, bolted it into one of the nut certs, then the nut cert spun because I didn't have it uh, flared all the way. So now it's stuck. So I'm gonna have to cut that off, which is not fun and try and get that seat back out without wrecking it. Uh, but fortunately all the motors and the tracks and everything on that one work. This one on the other hand has been soaking for three days uh, and I've even tried some heat and it just doesn't move. It just doesn't move at all. Like it, uh, and it's not the motor because the motor's trying to turn it. And I can see where it's seized, but let me see if I can show you. So it'll move ever so slightly one direction. but then it stops. And all it's doing is it, it's not moving on this track that's stuck right here, I'm pretty sure. And, and the only movement that I'm getting is actually the whole track flexing with the torque from this gear down here. So I think the motor works okay, but I think this is seized and as much as I hate to do it, I'm gonna have to take this track assembly off the seat, take it over to the bench and probably take it apart. Um, the other one, I just got away with spraying some stuff on it. 
and working it back and forth and then it came loose and everything was cool. This one is not at all the same, so I'm gonna have to uh, undo this harness and unbolt this from the seat somehow and take this over to the bench and take this one side apart if it comes apart. Um, worst case, I'll be trying to eBay uh, or See, this is from the Wreckers, so I'm not going to get a better one from the Wreckers around here. So I'll probably be trying to eBay a track frame thing, which will cost me just as much as the seats did. But, uh, oh well. Let's uh, see if we can get one in there anyways. Uh, so I have to cut that out and... Uh, yeah, do I want to start with problem A or problem B? Uh, and in the meantime, my truck has no seats. So that's fun. So it's a week later and uh, yeah, that escalated quickly. Things got crazy out of hand with this uh, easy seat conversion. One would think like eight bolts wouldn't be that big of a deal. Um, so I spent three days, three and a half days trying to unseize the seat track. And I got finally got it to move about a quarter of an inch and then it caught and popped. And it broke and uh, it broke the seat motor. So I took a trip to the wreckers. I think this one will do. Like it's the same, it's the same seat. There's maybe some stuff going on in here. It's got the same buttons but I need the driver's side. So, I have to pull all the shit out of the back. Truck is over there, seat is here. Truck has one seat installed and mounted. Actually, let's go look at that. So, it's got a couple of seats in the back. Look at this mess. Um, but I've got that one installed and I can't really install the other one until I had the working seat track. Uh, Cause I have to make the mounts work and all that sort of stuff. And I've got all these pieces I made and, and a giant pile of crap. So what I've got going on is this seat motor. I soaked it for three days. And when I finally got it to move like a quarter of an inch, uh, it really kind of crapped out. It, one of the gears in here must have broke and it popped out in this housing. When you put pressure on it, this housing moves. So uh, it's done. It, it's the tracks. I was fighting the losing battle anyways. So what I have to do is I got went to the wreckers and got this one and I've tested it and it works. So that's huge. Uh, my buddy McCreary sent me these switches that were uh, uh, out of the car that we took the seats from. So that's cool. Uh, I got seat belts. Okay, so what I have to do now with this one is everything. But I did test it and it does work, so that's cool. The problem was it wouldn't move back and forth. The, the up and down on the back and the up and down on the front, everything worked cool. Worked fine. Um, these three feet are all at the same height. 
But if you see, this one is about an inch and a half taller. So what I did on the one that I have got installed in the truck is I cut an inch out of this uh, on an angle and, and I welded that back together. So it was closer to the same height as these. And then I had to make shims and feet bases for uh, the installation. So what I'm gonna do with this was I'm gonna take it over to the shop side and I'm gonna cut that out and re-weld it, um, which will be a little different because this one has this guard on it over here that the uh, other seat didn't have. And then I've got a big job to take this seat frame out of the seat that I took it out of. It was out of a 07 Crown Vic. I had to cut all the upholstery for the uh, back and everything to be able to get this part. See, because this part here is easy enough. It's, it's right here. Uh, but this other part goes way up into the back. Uh, so to do that without screwing up that upholstery is gonna be fun. And also then I've gotta figure out at what point do I, I guess I gotta use this whole harness. I guess so. I gotta use that, use this whole harness. It's a good thing I took it. This is the harness that I've made um, just for testing purposes. But now I've got these switches, so I'm not really sure where to stop with that because I don't know where I'm gonna mount these switches. I might not need to, um, I might not need that little harness I made. We'll see. But anyways, uh, it's gonna be a bit of a chore to take this out of here without wrecking the seat. It's not really made to do that, I don't think, um, because it, like I said, it goes up into the back. So the first thing I'll do is I'll take that over and I'll re-weld it, or I'll cut that off and weld it, uh, clean it all up, wire brush it. Uh, I'm not gonna get too carried away because it's just a seat base and I don't care. Um, but I will lube the tracks and everything so it doesn't seize up like, the, like that other one did.
So I got that bolt out. Uh, that was okay. I've got all the wiring disconnected. There's two bolts in here, two nuts in here. So I'm gonna try and take this cover off the back and see if I can access it then. On the Crown Vic I pulled it out of, there was a zipper here, but I also cut it. So try not to screw this up any more than I have to. Um, I think if I get those two bolts, uh, it's a little precarious to try and get this whole uh, power back motor out, but I think it'll come. It's just this, uh, these two bolts here. And, and of course this thing is slimy as anything because I've uh, spent a bunch of time lubricating it. So, so I gotta figure out, uh, those are tiny little things. I don't know what they are. So I'm gonna have to get a little wrench for that to see if I can take this back off and maybe that'll give me some access in here. Um, these seats, apart from now being grubby, are actually pretty good, so I don't want to screw them up and I'm going to use them, so uh, let me see what I can do. Okay, here's the moment of truth. Don't do this with your batteries, by the way. This is 18 volt and it uh, screws your batteries in a hurry when you use them like this. There's an adapter that goes on these that you can get from like Amazon or something that turns this into a 12 volt power supply. It's got a built-in little transformer. However, I'm not that bright. I don't have a power supply uh, other than this. So this is what I'm using. And uh, um, I'll just do it for a second so it doesn't wreck anything. So what I want to see, first of all, is if the back moves. Uh, so I've got the harnesses made with all the things and they're pretty simple. It's not positive and negative really. It, well, I guess it is, but it's if you reverse the polarity, uh, it goes one way. Um, so it goes one way with standard polarity and then reverse the polarity and it goes the other way. It's, it's not rocket science, science, but let's see. Oh, hey, so the back's moving. 
So that's good. Okay, so I think that's all the way forward, which is what I need for install. So that's good. Now let's check. I've got these labeled front, back, front, back for the lift and tilt, and then, a, and then track. Um, and I've just got them in sets. So let's try the back. And this should either come up or go down. Should. Or, or it does that, which is nothing. And I want them all the way up for install. Okay, that's going down. So go the other way. Okay, that's all the way up. So that's good. Let's try the front. Same thing, I want it all the way up for install just so I've got clearance to get underneath it with my mitts. I think that is all the way up. It's down. Yep, so that's all the way up. And then track, which is why I had to replace this. So what I want to do is I want to put it all the way back. Uh, you can see I relocated the, the foot down so it's the same level as the rest of these. And I drilled the hole, re-drilled the hole so it's square. Um, because on the factory car mount, the one bolt was ahead. So let's go ahead and put that, go ahead and go back. Why is that it just keep going forever, I guess? Oh, I know why. Because I didn't put in that limit switch rail. That's fun. That's what that does. I was trying to figure out what that does. This switch here works on this, that other piece that was on here, which I can probably still cobble on there. And that prevents it from going too far back and driving it right off the, off the rails. This thing's already off the rails. Uh, so I'm going to put it back a little bit. I think I want it back a bit further than that for install. Um, I can only go so far back when it's in the truck uh, because there's the back of the cab it hits the back of the seat. Uh, so what I'm going to do is uh, I can't, I don't have enough time to install this today. So I'm going to spray these tracks with uh, some crown rust spray and uh, just set this aside for tonight and then uh, go at it again tomorrow um, because I have to make a bunch of mounts in the truck to receive this. Um, but while I had the two seat and two halves, I took the bottom half, put it in the truck, marked the floor where it goes because it's a lot easier to handle just half of the seat by myself than the, other, than the whole thing. Um, so I can lose this switch really, but. So the other thing I got to do is uh, I've got more wires to figure. Uh, I don't have the lumbar support hooked up yet. I know, first world problems, my 57 truck having lumbar support. But uh, hey, it's in the seat, so I might as well hook it up and make it work. So I gotta figure out what wires do that. Um, there's like a bunch of different wires here. But some of these wires will be for uh, silly things that I don't need, like the airbag, uh, the side airbag that's in the seat. I don't need that. so. Um, I should be able to trace that wire back and eliminate those, but I've got a little diagram. So, so anyways, I'm going to lube these up, let them sit overnight, and then uh, clean up and come back and uh, screw with the rest of it tomorrow and see where I get. Hopefully I get it in, and then i got to work on the... I've got seatbelts. i got to install them. I already have seatbelts in this truck, shoulder belts. I just need to replace them with these ones because they fit into the receivers that are built into the seat. And, and then i got to figure out where I'm going to mount my switches. So this will be another day or so yet, uh, finishing this. Um, simple job.
Hey, I just got home from work and I thought I would share some off camera progress that I made the other day. Uh, and then I've got to get back into uh, the next step of this project. All right, so just a quick, uh, quick thing. I still have to adjust the doors on this thing. Um, seat belts are in, it's a wonderful thing. So I'm not really going to talk about how I attach them or anything because they're not going to be modern crash standards by any means. Uh, so I don't want to encourage anyone to uh, do it the way I did it. However, if you're going to install modern-ish seat belts into an old car, um, first of all, do so. If, if you think it's practical and you think it makes sense, do it. Um, because if you get in an accident, and I've been in one, if you can see the remnants of my wagon up there, um, I've been in one uh, with no seatbelts and it sucks. You get hurt and it's not fun. So um, most of my stuff, I think everything has belts now, but uh, anything that I could put shoulder belts in, I did. Uh, the Corvairs just have lap belts. All the Corvairs just have lap belts, but the Malibu and uh, this truck and the Bug have shoulder belts. Um, so anyways, just pick a good spot that's good and strong and it may not be up to modern standards by any means, but whatever you do will um, surely be better than what it came with, which was nothing. So anyways, the seat belts are in. They work, they retract, they do all the things. They clip in. Uh, I didn't put the lap strap in. I left that out, but I left the buckle in for the center seat because the uh, the doggo, the dog has a thing that clips into the seatbelt so the dog can't go flying. Um, other than that, everything works. It's quite comfortable with the new pedal arrangement. It's good. Uh, my wife and I sat in here. I have moved it around a little bit um, just to be able to work on it. So that's cool. What I need to do next is I need to take this thing and uh, I've got an idea for a little 90 degree bracket that I'm gonna make, uh, just a simple thing um, to uh, fasten this right here somehow. Um, so I'm gonna do that. Uh, I got enough length in the harness here uh, because my buddy McCurry took this out of a car for me, actually the car that seats came out of, and he left, he got me the plug and he left me enough meat that I can uh, splice into the um, existing harness and I don't have to use this mocked up harness that I made. So really I can unplug these and take them to the bench and solder and heat shrink. So that'll be cool. Um, and then I just got to figure out where I'm going to mount them. Uh, and then that seat project, the seat portion of the project is complete. And uh, I have to move on to some other things. Okay, it's yet another day uh, at Slow Car Fix and I am working, still working on my 57 Chev truck in this junkyard upgrade and uh, adding these very comfy plush seats. Uh, so I spent a bunch of time yesterday building a wiring harness uh, which is just consisted of the existing switch harness and the seat harness combining them together adding some grounds um, soldering heat shrinking all that sort of stuff and then uh, running power to it so I've tried it I've tested it it all works um, I didn't have a fuse so I don't have an open spot on my fuse panel so I have uh, inline fuse that I'm going to install. I'm going to do that now and that will wrap up the wiring. The only thing I have left to do is just whip off a couple of brackets. I'm thinking just some 90 degree sheet metal brackets that screw down and then I'm going to uh, use some industrial velcro to hold them to the uh, uh, these 90 degree brackets, the switches to the 90 degree brackets so that way if I ever have an issue with a switch, which I did yesterday, uh, I can just pull it off, get a new switch, put the Velcro back on, and carry on. Uh, we'll see how that goes. I might have to glue them. I had an issue with one of the switches yesterday. A wire came off inside the switch and shorted out so it would not function properly. I almost pulled the seats back out of the truck trying to find the, the dead short, but uh, it turned out that there was just a wire off in the back of the switch. It was grounding. As soon as I uh, tried to put in any tilt function or up and down function. So anyways, I'm gonna wrap up this uh, soldering, not soldering, 
actually gonna use some a butt, butt splicer too uh, with heat shrink uh, for this fuse holder and that'll be it. Okay, so I am super happy with how this turned out. Uh, it's a lot of work, um, not a lot of money. Should mention, I al already sold the seats I pulled out. So between buying these, these seats, um, buying the replacement track that I had to go get at the Wreckers, some wiring and some, the fuse holder, uh, shipping for my buddy to send, um, send me the switches, um, I'm like a couple hundred bucks, maybe 225 bucks, 250 bucks, something like that. Definitely under 250. I pulled my old seats out. I sold them for, I think it was 175. So I'm in 50 bucks and probably too much time. Like I'm probably collectively, probably like 30 hours into this, uh, between making the brackets for the for the seats to sit on um screwing with that broken and crappy seat track going to the wreckers pulling these out of the car that i got them out of uh, the wiring all that stuff uh, i still haven't mounted the switches my idea that i had for the 90 degree thing uh i wasn't really feeling after i looked at it so i'm gonna sit on that no pun intended sit on that for a little bit think about what I want to do. I was looking, a friend of mine sent me some, uh, a link for some like electrical junction boxes where I could mount the switch in the box. Um, I, I don't know, it's, it, it doesn't really, I, it's not gonna work the way I think it thought it would initially. I'd have to carve out the front for the buttons. The buttons don't really come off the switch. It's, it's kind of a, a deal. So I'm not really sure what I'm gonna do about mounting them yet, but um, that's all I need to spend on, on this for right now and uh, I'm gonna end the video. I will update you later because I have to, uh, a, a couple other things I'm gonna do this truck and once I land on how I'm going to mount those switches, I'll share it with you so that way if, uh, if you wanna do something like this, maybe it'll help you, help you or maybe you'll throw me a, a comment in the comments and have a suggestion on how to mount those uh, stupid switches. But it's quite comfy. Uh, my head ends up on the headrest. Any of these old trucks, like when you put seats like this in it, you're going to be, they're going to be against the back of the cab. There's like, I'm not very tall. I'm like five foot seven, five foot eight. And with the, these, um, like just all the way back, I'm still, you know, uh, knee bent position on the throttle. I did, uh, really improve the throttle greatly by um, sectioning it and moving over and all that stuff. They're just a funny cab. And uh, with the factory seat, I think you sit up probably about the same height as what I am right now, because I'm quite a bit higher than the previous seats. Um, and there's no fuel tank in the back anymore. So that does help. They're just uh, not really that deep of a cab. Um, I had an international truck before and it was the same sort of thing. My Corvair truck is quite roomy in the cab, but uh, I, I still sit with the seat all the way back. So anyways, uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for sticking with me. This is going to be a long video. It's been a little while since my last video. I appreciate you uh, sticking with me and I'll catch you on the next one. I've got lots of stuff coming up here in the next little while that I've got to do. Uh, I have uh, some work on a Corvair that I got to do. I've got some work on many Corvairs that I have to do. So if you're into the Corvair stuff, that's cool. The 55, I'm still working on, um, but I, I'm not really posting any videos or pictures of it right now because I'm just doing a lot of body work. So um, I'm working on that. Uh, it is progressing. It's actually coming along nicely, but uh, there's not really a lot to show. So uh, I've got some work to do on this uh, 62 Corvair for a friend of mine. 
and I've got some work to do on my 64 Corvair. I have a body mount to do on the Malibu, and uh, which is going to be interesting. So I have to cut through the trunk floor down to the body mount, and that's going to be quite the show. So lots of stuff coming up. Uh, stick with me and I'll uh, keep posting. I'm quite happy to have a more comfortable truck with minimal investment, just my time. Well worth uh, picking through the junkyard and spending some time cleaning up something. Thanks for watching.